quadratic quadratic systems okay yesterday was a linear and a quadratic today is a quadratic quadratic system so we are dealing with two so draw them right above two parabolas okay now when we have two parabolas we've got a bunch of scenarios we can have when there is zero solutions, right? We can have when there is one solution. We can have when there are two solutions. And we can have when there are three or more solutions. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you about three minutes. I'll even put it on pause here. I want you to see if you can draw the four scenarios. You can work with somebody, you can, because I'm going to pick four of you to come up on the board and to draw them. Okay, so what are you doing? Draw me four pictures where, draw me a picture where no solutions would occur. Remember, it's got to be two parabolas. People drawing a line in a parabola. That was yesterday's news, okay? We're on to parabola, parabola here. Draw me two parabolas that would give no solutions. A scenario that would give me one. A scenario that would give me two. And a scenario, a scenario that would give me three or more. Here. Okay, so to give zero solutions, if you had one going one way and another one going another way, you're obviously not going to have those two intersect. Intersecting is solutions, right? Um, or you could have a scenario where it's going quite narrow and the other one is underneath going quite wide. Those two shouldn't meet either. Now, one solution, again, just to talk about that, that would be where we would have a common vertex but in an opposite direction. Now, we can also have a common vertex and a same direction because see those two if they just met at that one point that would work right they shared the one vertex two solutions is a scenario like this and three or more is if you had a parabola and the other one was right over top of that parabola that would give what we would call infinite okay so just a little bit of a jump from yesterday where we took a line and a parabola. Now it's just two parabolas. Um, the math behind it isn't any more complicated. We're just going to do one question, okay? Then you'll have a few to do for your assignment, hopefully get it done in class, and then get our test back to uh, see how well you did. Okay, so we got these two. Now, Again, I know it says use the an algebraic technique to determine the systems of equations. But again, I would challenge you first, graph them. Okay, so I want everybody to graph them. And get the answers before you start. I know it doesn't say that. You're not going to get any marks for it if it was written response. So why do it? But you will see it will lead you to get the correct answer. <coughs> okay, so see if you can get the correct answer before you start. Because this is going to be one of those units that you will actually be able to find out every correct answer before you do the question, or after you do the question. Okay, now this one here too, you can see I am not quite seeing the other one. It's up here somewhere. So I'm going to hit my window settings, and I'm going to mess with 
Y max. I'm going to put that at like 20, and then I'm going to hit graph. Okay. Then find your intersection points, okay? And just write them down. Uh, what points up here? Anyone get that one? Negative 5 over 2, comma, 16. And on the other one? 1 half, 1. Okay. And I know it may sound like it might be like a lame question. I already know the answer. Like, what have to deal with algebra now? I already know it. Well, the algebra is obviously the words that describe the picture. Okay, so it would be just like anything. If you were going into the police, you would actually be given pictures of scenes, and as part of assignments or whatever, you have to like describe what happened. Okay. Every police officer, when they come across a car accident, anything, they have to do a write-up of the entire accident. Okay, lots of paperwork when you're a police officer. Um, and and how do you like? And and they train you how to describe. Well, this person was going southbound uh, across the intersection at this time. They had no time has to be in there. Direction they were going, speed, all these things, right? So you've got to be able to um, put it. The, the collision or the crime or whatever, you got to describe it all in words, right? So it's never good enough just to be able to submit a picture, okay? There's no, uh, you know, court that's just going to take a picture. There has to be a description with it. And we're just going to try and give the reason why these are the points. So just like we did yesterday, we're going to do the same thing. Let's make these two equations equal each other. So we have 6x squared plus 7x minus 4 equals 2x squared minus x plus 1. Okay? Now, just like in the picture, if it doesn't make sense, then you know you need to go back. Because usually a superior will look at it and go, did this like vehicle do a spin? And you're like, no, it didn't do a spin. Well, why is it pointing southbound then? You said it was traveling northbound. Oh, did I? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, it wasn't. wasn't sorry. It was, it was going northbound. Okay? So, like, if, if they're not... If the story's not fit in the picture, you know, you should also look at it, too. Yeah, okay, that'll make sense. Good. Um, and if you're not doing that, even if you have checks and balances in the place and you're not doing that, you know... I guess the, the question would be is why not if you want to get all the marks, right? So this one, let's get everything on the left side. And I'm going to do that by minus 2x squared, right? And then that will give me 4x squared. And then I'm going to do add 1 to both sides. So that gives me plus 8x. And I'm going to minus 1 here, minus 5 equals zero. Now, here's the other thing that I really like graphing it first for, is the quadratic formula isn't the most efficient way to go if the answers are nice answers. Okay? And you can see in here, maybe the x's don't look nice, but they are. They're not 2.8173246. But if they were on there, I'd go right to the quadratic formula. Why? Because I'm wasting my time if I think I'm going to come up with two things that add to 8 and multiply to negative 20 if they were 2.174. So that's why I graph it first. Now, again, there's not many teachers that would teach it that way, right? They would say, do all the work. I want you to do it honestly. Do it without. I don't want you seeing the answer first. Then you can go check the answer. But what's the reality here? You guys are writing an exam. 
Um, time is a uh, pretty valuable commodity when you're writing an exam. Uh, that last five minutes, you can see, people really put it into gear. So hey, if, if uh, that's part of the game, learn how to be uh, better at it, right? And I think it's always better. Know your answers, then go for it. Okay? It does help lead you in places. And even when I do these, and I'm doing them, you'll see I'll pause for a while. And I'm like, okay, this isn't going to get my answer. I know I screwed up somewhere. Okay? You'll notice that. Like, it'll be like, you'll see me just kind of pause. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's a plus, not a minus. Okay? So when you know the answer, you're going to actually check throughout, not just after you're done, go check. Oh, crap, it's wrong. Now what do I do? Okay? So... This one is going to be nice, so I'm going to solve it this way. What plus what equals 8? What times what is negative 20? What would be the signs? Positive and a negative, right? Positive is winning. That way, you, uh, you're you going to be kind of drawn towards trying the two better answers. What are they? 10 and 8. 10 and 2. Okay? 10 and 2. So it's 4x squared plus 10x minus 2x minus 5 equals 0. Okay? Put your brackets here, your brackets here. Take out uh, 2x. It's going to leave me with 2x plus 5. Take out a negative 1. That's going to leave me with 2x plus 5 equals 0. See, even at this stage, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to get those X's. Okay? Or, oh no, that's not going to work. I must have screwed something up. Okay? Then you can check. Uh, we got 2X plus 5 times 2X minus 1 equals 0. X will equal negative 5 over 2 or 1 half. Now, again, those are just the X's. And that's why I don't put brackets around them, because I might think, see that comma in between? You know, even if you want to be more safe, I guess you could put or, right? So now we have to put those into the above formulas to find out the why. Be good to yourself. Pick the easiest out of them. Now, you may look at them and go, well, they're not, neither of them. Well, I would say the second one's the easier of the two, okay? So now I'm going to find my whys. And hopefully, I'm going to get the ones that are on the diagram there. So, find my y. So, I'm going to go y equals 2 times negative 5 over 2 squared minus negative 5 over 2, which is plus 5 over 2 plus 1. Now, 5 over 2 squared is <coughs> 25 over 4 plus 5 over 2 plus 1. That would give me 50 over 4. 50 over 4 is 25 over 2 plus 5 over 2 plus 1. Now 25 over 2 plus 5 over 2 is 30 over 2. 30 divided by 2 is 15 plus 1 equals 16. Okay, so the first one is negative 5 over 2, comma, 16. Awesome. That's what I got when I graphed it. Okay. Now let's do the other one. Now again, you're going, oh, there you go, the answer. Like, why are you doing this? Okay, because I will ask this on a written response. This is a good written response question. Um, understand that when you go to the diploma, there won't be any written response on the exam. So some people are probably thinking, so why are we learning so many written response? Because written response used to be on the diploma, and they took them off. And they asked the teachers to do all of the written response evaluation before they get to their diploma. So I have to, I'm evaluating that part of it. That does go towards half your diploma mark, right? So you do have to know how to do written response for grade 12, because I have to be making sure that that's part of my mark, because the province says, we're not going to pick that up anymore. You have to do it. So um, that's why it's not on the diploma, but it will be on every unit exam next year. And it was on every unit exam for grade 10 and on every unit exam for grade 11, right? 
because we're obviously just trying to get you used to the, the format, right? Now, the next one, y equals, I'm going to put in 2 times 1 half squared minus 1 half plus 1. Y equals 1 half squared is 1 quarter. 1 quarter times 2 is 1 half minus 1 half plus 1. 1 half minus 1 half is 0 plus 1. Y equals 1. So 1 half comma 1. Okay? And then it asks us to verify. Well, I don't have to verify because I verified before I started. Again, not intuitive. Not something you guys want to do. I get it. I'm writing written response. Ah, time. Ah, I got to get to my... I got to go. I, gotta, I can't be... I can't be graphing first. Like, I'll do it. And then I'll see if it's right. Okay? And I get that. But if you really stop to go, okay, well, I will... It's kind of like saying, you know, we're late. Like, I'm lost and I'm late. So I'm going to keep driving around until I find it. Or, okay, I'm just going to go ask somebody for directions. Then no one likes asking for directions, right? No one likes getting out of their car, finding somebody, whatever. But once you find directions, you can speed up the process quite a bit. And the first scenario, you may never find it. Okay? So we are doing... Questions one to six. Okay, so you have buckets all time to work. <laughs> 